What's up, guys? This is the Osmo.com Night Shift Podcast. Talking some MLB for Saturday, August 4th. We've got just one slate to go over. The early is only two games, so I don't really see that being worth talking about too much. Two game slates, uh, just not my forte. Ownership is super concentrated, as you can imagine. So we're going to go over the 12 game main slate, starting with the seven Eastern games. Huge slate for a Saturday. Get to Osmo.com, check out all of our content. We have the offer, the premium content, especially you get access to the Osmo.com uh, player rankings and the ownership projections articles from Osmo himself. On Saturdays, he'll be doing the lineup card article, slate specific advice, his approach to the slate, where he's going, where he's fading, etc., etc. Uh, very good read before you're making your lineups. Something I always make sure to read on Wednesdays and Saturdays when he has that article out. All right, let's get into the slate. We're going to start with Cincinnati and Washington. This is in D.C. Matt Harvey going up against Jeremy Hellickson. A lot of runs expected in this game. Total over 10 right now. Um obviously about 24 hours out so this could change but Matt Harvey against Jeremy Hellickson and um so Harvey has been a little bit better against both handedness since coming over to the Reds it seemed like uh just like a month ago but he's been them most of the season I think he's still gonna have a lot of trouble with lefties and this is just not the lineup you want to go up against Nats being red hot and I mean, I'm just going full on Nat stack. I do respect Harvey. I don't think he's just terrible anymore. Seems to have figured out something, at least against righties. But Harper, Adams, Soto, Murphy, that's just not the recipe for success. You've got Trey Turner wreaking havoc on the base pads as well. I think it's going to be a tough go for Harvey. I'm with Vegas here, near six run total for the Nationals. Hellickson on the other side, not crazy about him, 5,700. He's a favorite. He's probably going to get run support, but I don't see many strikeouts in general, and then I don't see very many at all um, against this Reds team. You've got Votto and Jeanette in there. Eugenio Suarez, we talked about at length. Barnhart's not an easy out either, under 17% K rate for him. So I'm just worried about any sort of upside here for Helix. I know he's only 5,700, so if he gets you a win in a few innings, he's probably going to be worth it, but... On big slates like this, I want a guy that can get me five, six, seven strikeouts, even at this price. All right, let's go to Miami and Philadelphia. Jose Urena against Zach Eflin. Urena 6,300, Eflin 8K. Again, not super interested in either pitcher. I like lefties against Urena, so Carlos Santana as Drupal Cabrera and Nick Williams all stick out to me as pretty solid plays. Reese Hoskins is in play pretty much every day especially when he's this hot. Seems like a very streaky hitter, and um, it's not like Urena doesn't give up hard contact, 41% on the season in total. So I'm on a bit of a Philly stack. That lineup drops off for me once you get past Williams in the sixth spot, but um, I think most of these guys are usable. Eflin going for the Phillies. I want to like Eflin here. I think he's going to get some ownership because he's 8K and he's at home and it's against the Marlins. I get all that, but this is a different play than Velasquez. Velasquez has huge strikeout upside, and Eflin really doesn't. He is good at limiting hard contact, so I think he's somewhat safe. I think he probably pitches well here and goes six innings maybe, but not someone I'm targeting heavily in GPPs as I'm expecting him to be one of the more popular options in this mid-tier. St. Louis and Pittsburgh, Austin Gomber against Ivan Nova. Once again, tough to recommend any pitchers in this one. Gomber, 5,600. Nova, 5,600. I want to like Gomber here, but he just made a couple of relief appearances, um, the last one being on the 1st of August. So this will only be three days of rest. I don't know how long the leash is going to be. I like lefties against Pittsburgh, but I don't think I can go to Gomber here he's just I'm expecting what 50 pitches maybe um, unless I'm just completely off here 
and he, they say he can go 80 or whatever, then I would have some interest, but um, just tough for me to get there even for 5,600. <clears throat> Pirates bats on the other side. I like Cervelli against the lefty anytime. Um, David Freeze as well grades out as an above average hitter. Um, and that is about it. Not my favorite park to target. Not two pitchers I love targeting. Um, well, these lineups specifically. So Nova, obviously much better against righties, can strike them out, can limit the card contact and all that. Against lefties, he is pretty poor. So this is a Matt Carpenter spot for me. This is a Dexter Fowler spot for me. And maybe, um, oh wait, Tyler O'Neill. I was going to say, I didn't know O'Neill was going to be in the lineup. Uh, or in the projected lineup. But anyways, those two guys, Carpenter and Fowler, are the only two that I really want to play here against Nova. Um, we've got... Let's go to the next game, actually. Yeah, that, that one's good. Atlanta and New York, the Mets. Kevin Gaussman against Zach Wheeler. Gaussman, 8,100, new team debut with the Braves. I like Gaussman as a pitcher a ton. Um, it's not difficult to see why. If you look at some of what he does, he gets a lot of swinging strikes, gets some chases, limits hard contact. The, the K rate overall isn't great, 19.5% for the season, but um, if he's going to be throwing to Tyler Flowers in this spot, Flowers is one of the best defensive catchers, one of the best game callers, pitch framers, all that good stuff. So that's the kind of pitcher that Gaussman needs. Um, someone that's going to get him to throw his best pitches in the right spot. And so if it's Flowers catching here, I love that against this run down Mets team. If not, uh, if it's Suzuki, then I still think it's fine, but I'm a little less high on Gaussman if that's the case. On the Mets side, Zach Wheeler for 8,400 coming off a very nice performance. Uh, I just don't want to play him here against this Braves team. I know they haven't been as great as they were earlier in the season, but we've got a couple of guys under 10% K rates in Marquecas and Suzuki, um, and then just good hitters, Freeman, Albies. Those guys don't strike out either against righties and Ciarte. So I'm not crazy about Wheeler in the spot. I probably won't have much, if any of him, much prefer to go with Gaussman, who I think will be probably lower owned. Colorado and Milwaukee, we've got Tyler Anderson against Freddie Peralta. Two pitchers that I've played a lot of this year. Anderson, 7,400. I like that price for him. I don't love the matchup. Brewers are one of those teams that have gotten into that territory where I don't want to mess around with them. Just a sick top six. Even with two lefties in the top six, Yelich and Moustakis, I don't, I don't love the idea of playing a pitcher against them. So, I like Anderson. I like his price. I may have some of him, but not going to be someone where I'm just going to. He's going to be hitting my um, ownership caps or anything like that. I just think he's a GPP play, and that is about it. If he ends up in some lineups of mine, I'll be happy with it. If he doesn't, I'm not going to sweat it because I don't think it's a perfect strikeout spot for him either freddy peralta on the other side um 9300 here overpriced in my opinion the rockies are not as good outside of coors as we talked about seemingly the last two weeks straight but i think peralta's just getting figured out he doesn't have great stuff and um <clears throat> You know, those numbers, 32% K rate, 12% swinging strike rate of all, regressed in his last few starts. So I don't think he's at the top of his game right now or he's been figured out, and therefore I don't want to play him. I like Blackman on the other side and Carlos Gonzalez if you're targeting against Peralta, um, and then maybe even Nolan Arenado, righty-righty for 5,100. Kansas City and Minnesota. We've got Birch Smith against Jose Barrios. Smith, 4,500. You're going to get him and then the bullpen for the Royals, which, as we've noted often, it's the worst in the league. And these Twins bats have to be in play. Polanco and Rosario are my favorites. Morrison in the cleanup spot. I'd even play Miguel Sano here. I'm not a big fan of him, but 4,200, I think, dual position eligibility 
he's at least going to be in my player pool. And uh, I like Max Kepler a lot in this spot for 4,100. So the Twins are going to be one of my favorite stacks. 5.2 run total for them, wind blowing out at target field. Um, and huge favorites. So Jose Barrios going for them. He's 11K. I said he, I thought he was unhealthy before the All-Star break or maybe right after the All-Star break. I can't remember. But his velocity is back up for the last couple starts. And that's enough for me to think he's at least um, – almost 100%, if not 100% at all. The velocity had dipped, had went back up, then dipped again. Um, but it looks to have been stable his last couple starts. So it's good to see for Barrios, just a long way of saying that. But 11K here against the Royals, who are striking out among tops in the league over the last month, especially against right-handed pitching, 22.5% um, over the last month not hitting for any power i mean they're just a really really bad team and they lost one of their best hitters recently so those numbers are going to look even worse over the long run so i like barrios for 11k i think he's a fine spend up option angels and indians felix pena going up against Corey kluber pena 5900 kluber 10-1 I'm not going to Pena here. I like him as a pitcher, but a five-run total and an Indians team that is stacked up top is not where I'm going to play Pena. So his best pitch is the slider. That's not going to work as well against lefties, especially not Lindor, Brantley, Ramirez. So those three I'll target. Um, I like Yonder Alonso as well. Over 40% hard contact against righties for him this season. Under 20% K rate. Uh, 212 ISO. I like Alonzo a lot as my finish to the four-man stack over Edwin Encarnacion. Corey Kluber for 10-1. Man, it's weird seeing Kluber that lowly priced at home as a 235 favorite. It makes me want to play him. Um, Maybe not the upside as some of the other pitchers in the league, like the Scherzers or um, the Chris Sales. Um, but if he can even be like 85, 90% that upside, like if he, he's still got 30 point upside, I think on, uh, from game to game, is he going to do it here? I have no idea, but for 10 one, I'm willing to find out. So you've got Otani and Calhoun at the top there. Those two strike out over 24% of the time against righties. Um, and then near the bottom of the angels lineup, there's some sneaky K upside with Valbuena, um, Arcia, David Fletcher, righty, righty. Um, we've got Upton in there as well. So I like Kluber for 10-1. I'm interested to see how chalky he's going to be because if he's not going to be one of the higher-owned pitchers, I'm going to take a chance and go well overweight on Kluber, if that's even taking a chance. I think he is pretty safe. You're worried about Trout. You're worried about Otani's power. But um, overall, I think he's a really solid play for only 10-1. Baltimore and Texas, crazy weather once again, 100 degrees, Dylan Bundy and Mike Miner. Bundy, 7,600. I like him at that price. I hate him in this environment. I think this team matches up really well against him. Chu, Odor, Gallo, Guzman, Calhoun, just lefty power all around for the Rangers. Great weather, a six run total almost for the Rangers. So even me, the biggest of Dylan Bundy lovers, um, I don't think I'll be able to get to him because of all those factors. The Rangers stack is going to be super chalky. I get it. I'll probably be underweight once again, though, because I respect Bundy as a pitcher. If I had to guess, he's probably given up a home run or two, but um, not not good enough prospects for me to consider playing Bundy. Just good enough for me to be lower on the Rangers stack than I anticipate the public will be. Miner for 7,100 really, really struggles with hard contact against righties. Um, doesn't strike them out at an impressive rate. Not a lot of swinging strikes. I think he's going to really struggle in this matchup. So I'm actually all over the Baltimore stack. And I like VR against lefties. Love Valencia. He's going to be popular for 3,800. The Orioles are super cheap here. Just Adam Jones is 4K. And then everyone else is 3,900 or less in this projected lineup. So they're one of my favorite stacks of the day against Miner. Um, I think they should touch him up here 
and a near five run total for the Orioles probably will go somewhat under owned because there's not a ton to pay up for at pitcher tonight and then um, this Rangers side is going to attract most of the attention I would assume San Francisco and Arizona Andrew Suarez for 6k against Clay Buckholtz again not a game where I want to target pitching I don't think Suarez is very good at all and over 40% hard contact for him against le- um, against righties. He's really good against lefties, so he's got that going for him. The problem is Arizona won't be rolling out um, very many lefties, if any at all. I mean, Peralta may lead off, or you know he might bat fifth or sixth. I don't know what they usually do with him against lefties, but um, the rest of this lineup should be able to hit Suarez very hard. Goldschmidt and Pollock grayed out as two of the best plays on the entire slate. And then Eduardo Escobar, Souza, uh, Kettle Marte, I prefer over Ahmed for cheaper. I don't know why Ahmed's price is 4700 I know he's a good hitter against lefties, but Marte's been better than him this year in basically every category and strikes out less. So I prefer Marte, dual position eligibility for him as well. Um, and even if he bats seventh, I'm all over that in this Arizona stack. Buckholtz, I can't get to. Um, I certainly understand the play for him. I, I think he is somewhat safe. The Giants are not a scary team, especially not against righties. That's where I like to target them. Um, but panic in that lineup. Crawford, uh, another lefty down the order. And Duggar, I mean, I don't think Duggar's any good, but just another lefty in there to muck things up for Buckholtz. Um, it's just a, an avoid spot, really. The Diamondbacks, or I'm sorry, the Giants bats against Buckholtz, so not much analysis need to be given there. I'm just not on either side, hoping those players stay quiet. Detroit and Oakland, Jordan Zimmerman for 6,200 against Edwin Jackson for 6,400. Tigers, just a 3.7 run total. It's got to put Jackson in play. I know there's some talk that he's a better pitcher around the industry. Um, I don't know what I'm missing with Jackson. He doesn't grade out very well for me, but um, or I should say his him as a pitcher, he doesn't grade out very well for me. But this matchup is about as good as it gets. He's going to get six, maybe seven righties for the Tigers. He's in a really good park for pitching. Uh, just 70 degrees here in Oakland. I mean, 6,400, you've got to consider him. And um, he's done it a lot of times this year. He's averaging 16 DK points for the season. I know that doesn't tell everything, but maybe it's not all about swinging strikes for him. Um, he's shown he can get some strikeouts and go pretty deep. So if this is going to be the spot where he blows up, that's going to be pretty frustrating. But I will have a bunch of Edwin Jackson um, for better or for worse. The Tigers are that bad. Jordan Zimmerman, 6,200, not going there. The A's just have a couple too many power bats for me to want to target Zimmerman. I love Matt Olson and Jed Lowry here. Uh, I love Chris Davis as well for 5,300. Chapman, I love that they moved him up, and he's only 4,400. So those two through five or two through six, if you want to include Piscotti, all grayed out really, really well for me against Jordan Zimmerman even in a subpar hitter's park. So Oakland stack, I think, may go a little bit unknown despite the 4.9 total. Houston and L.A. Lance McCullers against Kenta Maeda. McCullers 8,800, Maeda 8,300. It's weird saying those prices, they're both probably a little bit underpriced for this matchup. Uh, McCullers, so if I'm going to play it, a pitcher against the Dodgers, it would be one like McCullers. Huge swinging strike rate, can rack up 10 in just a few innings. Uh, I think he had 11 in five innings in his last start. Like someone who can do that and just, when they're on, they're just unhittable. And he's that type of pitcher. So um, I hate targeting against the Dodgers, but I think McCullers is a good GPP play. Could it go poorly? Absolutely. If he doesn't have his command, he's going to get rocked. Um, But if he does... I think he has a chance to like lead the slate in raw points for pitchers at least. 
there's not a ton of guys I think that have 30 plus point upside and he's one of them and he's only 8,800 and I don't think many people will be on him so he's interesting um, for those reasons Maeda on the other side kind of the same deal with him I don't know if he's got 30 plus point upside in this spot um, but just the price too cheap you look at the Astros run total 3.7 Maeda's at home I know it didn't work out last time but um, short memory here in DFS uh, the strikeout upside I'm worried about for him m- more than I am with McCullers. Um, some of these guys, some of these rates for the Astros are just so low. You've got Springer at 17%, Guriel at, uh, or I'm sorry, Bregman at 13.4%, Tony Kemp under 10%. Uh, who knows who's going to be in there? Tyler White, I'm not even sure. These guys don't really strike out that much. So I think they might be able to give Maeda a little bit of an issue. Redick in there as well. I don't know. Um, I prefer McCullers, and I hate targeting against the Dodgers, but I think it makes sense here on this slate where you don't have a lot of great arms. Toronto and Seattle, last game of the night. Marco Estrada against James Paxton. Um Estrada, 5,400, he's a pretty easy write-off for me. Um, And it's not the lefties that I want against Estrada. He actually has one of the best hard contact rates against lefties, like the lowest um, on the slate. Him and Suarez right down there, about 25% against lefties, which is super impressive, probably because of that changeup. And it's not really the lefties that I like on the Mariners anyways. It's Cruz and Hanniger. So those are the two guys I want. Gives up a lot more hard hits. Um, strikes them out less so I want to target a couple righty bats even Healy against Estrada I think that'll go um, pretty under owned you even throw Zunino in there for only 3,500 Paxton 12-9 he's going to be somewhat popular tonight Um, a little bit overpriced but in a great spot against the Blue Jays Uh, three run total for Toronto Paxton's pitching at home. We've seen him have huge performances. The swinging strike rate was way up in his last start. Super, super impressive and telling start against the Astros. He's healthy. Uh, went seven innings, struck out eight in only 82 pitches. So, like, if you're going to be that efficient against a team like Houston, I know they had been ice cold, but still really tough to rack up eight strikeouts that efficiently against an Astros team. He could certainly do the same thing or even more against the Blue Jays. So I like Paxton. I'm willing to pay up for him on this slate. All right, and that's going to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the night shift. Uh, Enjoy your Saturday. Don't be playing the two-game slate. Um, Play this 12-gamer. It'll be a lot of fun. Check out Osmo's lineup card article. That will be out around 4 Eastern. Spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks. I will be on those. We will have the daily game plan email blast out as well. Uh, Check your spam folder if you haven't been getting that. Sometimes it's been going to the junk folder, so just um, put that in your inbox. It should start to show up there if you unmark it as spam. I know I had that issue for a couple times. So um, ownership projections should be out in the morning, and then the rankings as well. Good luck, guys. Enjoy the Saturday slate. Enjoy your weekend and win some money.